Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. First of all, I want to say I'm honored. It's a privilege to be among so many honorable, honorable people. I see a lot of my uh, colleagues, we call them colleagues out of here, fellow clowns and everything, convicts. And they're struggling, but they're making, they're successful in making that transition. Uh, for people like me, that's uh, something good. It's motivation for us, yes. It's a motivation for me to look around and see some of my peers uh, making that transition back in society and being productive. I see Kenyatta, Doug Butler, and I even see guys who helped me start a program in San Quentin called No More Tears, James Brown. I see guys that come in here that help us run the programs. Uh, Keith Carson has been one of the sponsors of a program we, me and some more inmates started uh, called No More Tears. No More Tears uh, started to ask and be a solution to some of the problems that's going on in Oakland. Oakland, the murder rate had hit 123 in 2002. And me and some fellow inmates decided that we had to come from behind that part of being perpetrators of crime and find a way to start solving some of these problems, especially when we started to see our younger brothers and sisters starting to follow in our suit and fall to some of the same things that we were doing before. Inside the department, I found out quickly that without education and knowledge, you can't go too far in life. Uh, and I enrolled in a patent college and got my associate degree. Just to keep it simple, I did things that I thought would prepare me for society out here. Uh, I worked, woke up on time, obeyed orders. I did all those things the good Department of Correction prepared me to do. The Department of Correction is good when it comes to housing prisoners, those who have been a detriment to, to society. But I think it comes a time in a person's life when that debt is paid that equally it should be sent, laid forth for that person to make that transition back into society. Society doesn't owe us. We owe society. For every crime, for everything that we have done to take from society, we owe society. But what we ask from the other side is that you give us the opportunity to pay that debt. Uh, coming up out of the institution, first of all, ill-prepared, a lot of the inmates don't have the resources. They don't have the education. They don't have the transportation and medical things to do. They don't have the support system. I myself can't say I was like that. I'm kind of a public exception to the rule. During my 27, of 27 years of incarceration, I had a support system, a strong support system. But I was probably a lower percentage of inmates that saw, saw the importance in keeping those uh, relationships intact. Uh, the things I'm faced with now that I throw, I helped to co-found co No More Tears inside San Quentin. I had my idea, I'm realistic as it may have been, of what it would be like to make this transition back into society. I did not take into account some of the resources that, I, that were available to me that they would not be uh, practical. Most of them were outdated and uh, unavailable. Us in the institution, we in the institution, we come to pride our word. Our word is everything. And when we get these resources and people come in and offer their help, when we come out, we be looking for that. And the majority of people that I saw when I came out and the resources that I had were outdated. And those people who had offered to, to do the help, either because of the crunch of the economy, a lot of things that just wasn't, uh, could be avoided stop them from uh, meeting those things. So yes, I've had some struggles, but I've also had a lot of blessings. Uh, I had Keith Carson constantly behind me. I had Rodney Brooks as a strong mentor, keep guiding me and telling me, you better stay straight, keep it right. You know, I need, I mean, we need that type of motivation. I mean, not that I would ever, ever in life want to see that side of life again. First of all, not because of, uh, just being incarcerated, but because no human being is intended to live like that, but when you're not acting like a human being, when you're acting other than that, then we have to have a place to sit in. Uh, but then again, on the other side of that, we should also prepare them while they're there. If you're sending a person to, to be incarcerated because he has a drug offense, which is 80% of the crime are drug related, then why shouldn't his time be spent uh, in dealing with his addiction? I think we put too much emphasis on the run of the institution and not enough emphasis on 
the latter part of what we changed our name, you know, the California Department of Correction and Rehabilitation. Inmates should be offered an opportunity to upgrade. They should have the up-to-date uh, standard uh, computer literacy program. They should have the up-to-date standard education and staff to go in there. I understand that country won't allow us to just get the best teachers, the best equipment, but I think that the job that is being done is kind of hindering our community. When you send an inmate into the institution and he's already ill-prepared to make it in society, and you tell him upon release one of his conditions that he had to go back to the same circumstances and the situation from which he came from, are we really preparing that man for rehabilitation? When this person has did everything in his power inside the institution, such as myself, my last 20 years, I was a lifer inmate. My last 20 years, I never had any type of infractions. Everything I did was geared toward preparing myself to be the man, to be the father, and to be the husband out in this community and being an asset to my community to pay back what I took. You can never pay back exactly what I took. I was an ex gang out of Los Angeles County, and I took the life of one of my rivals. That's something I can never let down. I spent the rest of my life, and my six months has been running into uh, YGC over in San Francisco, talking to young children about trying to get them to deter that uh, mentality, to change their mentality, going over to the drug diversion program, making them understand how necessary it was for them to stay away from the gateway drugs, because a lot of them don't see weed as drugs. Uh, I spent a lot of time in the streets of Richmond trying to talk to perpetrators of crime, trying to teach them before they get there what's the way them and why they are better than that. I shouldn't have to be the only one out there, not that I'm the only one, but I should have the resources out there to help me do this, but I don't see that there. I'm here today just to tell you that, first of all, I want to thank the state of California for giving me a second chance. And, and I continue my vow to try to change the young men that's out there and the young women that's out there going to prayer that's continue in that lifestyle. And I want to show them that there is hope. I want to show them self-value. But also I need the help of resources in the community that's out there, the people who have the authority to put the resources in place. I know that, again, that we're in an economical crunch right now. I know that uh, we're in a recession. I mean, uh, the economy is in a uh, going through a di dire strait. I'm kind of nervous. I haven't spoken in front of so many people like this before. But I know the economy, the economy is not in the perfect shape right now. But I think if we, we roll up our sleeves and we get out there and, qu and quit looking at each other like them and us and start looking at us as one united front, one community, and we work together, that we can solve a lot of our problems. We can improve our educational system. We can improve the correctional system. We can bring those men, those who are desired to re-enter the society, we can bring them up to court so when they do come out here, they can be an asset to the program. And again, I thank you for allowing me this time to speak.